everyone, welcome to part three of my tutorial on how to animate your Pokemon. So last time we made our model all shiny, we managed to render the color, we played around with UVs a little as well. And uh, in this part we're going to be creating and editing at an armatures. What is an armature, Holland? Well, an armature is basically, uh, it's basically the skeleton of our model and our Pokemon that we are going to have to create. And yes, I just asked myself a question. Silly me. Okay, so to give you an, to give you an idea of what an armature is like and what it can do, we'll just open this and ta-da! It's my intro, my unedited intro. You can clearly see how the armature affects its pose and how it makes it possible. So, yeah, this is how I, this, like I said, this is how I created my intro, and uh, we can see that how cool the armature, what can the armature can do with our Pokemon. So I'm going to show you guys how to create one for Mudkip, and uh, basically this can apply to any Pokemon. It just depend, it just might be more complicated based on its design, and uh, yeah. So depending on that, how big it is, its design, and all this stuff. Now, if we click Shift A and go to Armature Select Single Bone, we'll get this thing. Um, to add a single bone, and uh, we'll notice a problem right away, and that's the problem is that it goes through the Pokemon, but it doesn't actually, you can't actually view it, and that's a problem, because we want to see it through the Pokemon. In order to do this, quite simple, to fix this, you just come here to the Object Data tab, it's the same tab I came for Lamps, except it has a different icon for Armature. I'm going to come up here, hit X-Ray, so we can see the bone through Mudkip. Now, uh, let's say I move my bone here, right? And if I toggle, if I go to this view, now, we have no idea that this bone is not in the model. Granted, we have this view, but even then, that's not that helpful. Now, we we obviously see in this view that this is not in the model, but we don't know from this view because this has no X coordinate. Well, no X view. Um, view. So, we need a way that we can use multiple ortho orthos and... Um, orthographic views so that we can get a sense of where we're placing the bone and how it's working. In order to do this, all we have to do is click view, toggle quad view, and we get this. Now I'm going to undo so I can just put my bone back in the center there. Uh, this toggles automatically to front camera, but it's okay because we can always change that up. Uh, remember, uh, also note that you cannot rotate these views no matter what you do. Anything you click to try to pan the view or, well, you can pan the view, you can't rotate it though. And that's a good thing because it prevents you from screwing yourself over because, yeah, trust me, it's help really helpful. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to, I'm going to click R, X, move it to the left a little bit to set the positive direction indicator to be, uh, to be, uh, the left side, because otherwise it defaults to right side, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this bone right around here, and I'm going to scale it up a little bit, uh, remember that if you, the bigger the bone is, the more, the more, the more influence it has in, uh, your mo in your model, it'll affect more vertices. It'll trigger, it'll cause your bot, it'll cause your model to move more. Is what I'm trying to say. It'll affect more vertices. So when you try to move this bone, more of the model will move. So I'm just placing this here because I want this thing, this bone, to extrude into a tail, a giant tail bone right there. I'm gonna move it a little closer and maybe scale it out a tiny bit. I think that's right. I think that's. I think that's. I think this is okay. I think this is okay. So. Now, now that we've created our first bone, now from there we want to click tab and go to edit mode. Now we are going to create the entire skeleton of Mudkip. Remember to not select the entire bone if you're going to extrude something, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. But uh, remember not to click the entire bone. Just click the joint. It makes it a lot easier because the bone will make you extrude like two bones from each joint. So I'm going to click this joint right here. I'm going to extrude into a giant tail bone right there. Um. So if you if suppose that you don't want it to be an angle, if you want it to be straight, you can right click. The bone will still be there, so you can screw it out like that. Uh, I'm just gonna grab it and do that. Click G to grab, uh, and then move it a little like that. I like to angle it a little bit, which is nice. So now we have that. Now um, I'm gonna go here. This is joint right here, and I want to create the the leg bones now. Now you'll notice that. Uh, I could do this. I could make a bone here. I could make another bone here, and then I could just put them down and make. Uh, I can make leg bones, but that's not really optimal because we want it's leg bones, right? So we want 
this to be reflected on this side. We'll want the we'll want the legs to be reflected too, so they're not like completely different. And uh, how to do this is you click you can go to this tab, and uh, you can click T or you can hit that tab, uh, whatever you want to do. Click X axis mirror in armature options, and once you're done with that, you can click T again. And uh, I forgot to mention something before before I do this. Uh, you can also, if you don't think this is a big enough view, you can just click view and toggle full screen. So now you're in full screen. That's cool. But uh, anyway, what the XX mirror does is if we click shift E to extrude something, it'll come up like this. So we have uh, two bones that are reflected across the X axis. They're perfectly, well, not really, yeah, they're, ref well, they're reflected across the Y axis. They're just parallel to the x-axis, so, so they're mirrored across the x-axis basically. So this is really nice because it allows us to make our leg bone like this. Remember to click shift E on that joint and uh, I'm going to look at my front view to make sure that I'm not going out of the model or anything. Uh, I'll put it right around there and uh, what I'm going to do is I can click this joint. Now remember, now you'll notice that you have this bone here and you have a bone here. Now you'll notice that if this says L, this is R. For every R, there's an L counterpart. Now and vice versa. So if you click E to extrude a bone here, there will be this. They'll sense that it'll send a message to this counterpart to extrude the same bone down like that. And uh, so you don't have to click Shift E over and over again once you've already clicked it once. Like for example, if I click E here, it'll extrude onto that bone because I already told it to. So basically, uh, I'm gonna. Put this down here. I could make this perfectly vertical, but I want it to be more in the center of the paw, or, is it paw or foot or whatever. I don't really know what to call it. I'm just gonna call it its foot, its feet. Ah, uh, quadrupedal Pokemon. Why do you have to be so much more difficult? Oh well. So I'm gonna make it around here. So this is gonna be its leg, and then uh, to lift its foot whenever it wants to, I can place one down. Place a small. No, that's way too small actually. So we'll just move it down like that. Okay. That's cool. So we created the first, the back rear legs. Now what we want to do here is we want to click Shift E again, but be sure to be looking at the front ortho. And that's because you want to, when you click Shift E, you want to make sure that the front ortho covers up the back bone that you just created completely. So that it looks, so that it has similar legs, right? Because you want to make the legs as similar as possible. So I'm going to click that. It looks pretty similar. Pretty similar. This is a little longer, but I guess that's to be expected for the way I position the backbone. So, uh, after that, I'm going to go to front and I'm going to put it down so that it covers exactly the leg length of the backbone. And then I'm also going to put a small armature down there so that it covers that. So now we have two approximately identical, uh, arm armatures for their legs. So now we've pretty much covered we pretty much covered Mudkip's legs and his lower body. So now I'm going to, I want to go to this view actually, the user perspective mode, just makes it easier to see. And uh, I'm going to do it down here. Now the reason I want to go like this because it's just because I don't want those fins. Those fins tend to block my way. So I don't want to do, I don't want to block my way too much. So I can see this back here. This is going to be the neck. Okay. So we're going to click this and uh, we're going to extrude a bone from it so we can Make that its neck. Be sure it's perfect. I'm going to make sure it's perfectly vertical, so I'm going to make that like that. So but there's no problem with it. Now, I prefer, after this part, this is going to be basically be the neck bone. Uh, I prefer having one big bone just covering its entire head. I have a reason for this, and I'll show you guys why in a moment. And then we can also extrude one more bone. And that's Finn. So yeah, I think this is basically a pretty good skeleton. Pretty good armature, I think. So let me toggle off full screen and I'll toggle off quad view in a moment. There we go. So let's see this. So this is our armature. So you can tab out of edit mode there. So check it out. Uh, if we move this around, if we move this around, we'll notice that our model does not move with it, which is bad. That's not what we want. So how to do that? We simply click the model. We click shift select the armature, control P and uh, parent the armature deform with automatic weights. What this does is it'll automatically calculate the, um, the vertices that each bone is, uh, each bone is controlling on the model. And, uh, if you, sometimes you might get an error that says, oh, couldn't calculate or something like that. That basically means something's wrong with your armature and you have to fix it. But Hoenn, do I have to 
But do I have to, to redo the entire thing from scratch? Well, not necessarily. What you can do is you can tab back into edit mode. Uh, you can edit the bones you need to and then just reparent them and see if that works. Uh, sometimes it's better to start from scratch, though. I would be surprised. I had to start from scratch a lot of times when I first created an armature, so... You know, it's not always a bad thing. But now that we've parented it, and it doesn't seem to have given us any error right now, we can, when we select the armature, we can go from object mode to pose mode. Now, what does pose mode do? It's basically, we can now move this around. Be sure not to grab. If you grab, something like this will happen, and that's bad. Even if you rotate, something like this will happen, and I will go over how to fix that in the next part. Don't worry. It will, this is supposed to happen right now. And uh, this is also supposed to happen. So if we can rotate the face, we'll notice that some parts come apart, and that's a problem. Like I said, we will get to fixing that. We can do some other stuff, like we can wag its tail a little bit. Uh, mm, we can do this too. Uh, looks a little... We can move the model a bit, so it's kind of nice. But um, there are some problems with moving it at first. Uh, don't worry, it's supposed to be like that when you first get into uh, creating armatures. But uh, it's okay, because we are going to fix all of that in the next part. So that is it for this video. I basically showed you guys how you can make uh, an armature for um, a mud for a mudkip, and that can apply to any Pokemon. Although some designs may be more complicated than others. So that's about it for this part. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, if you liked it, be sure to leave a like to let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Also, definitely check out ROE Studios. They already have videos on this stuff, and uh, it might be useful to check those out as well if you're going to try this. So I will leave those websites, as I always do, in the description. So yeah, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.